In this tutorial, we're going to look at uh, other aspects of group 7, or the halogens, in particular the displacement reactions that allow us to work out which is the most and which is the least reactive in the group. And then we're going to explain the similarity in the reactions of the group 7 elements, but also the differences in um, how reactive they are by the size of their atoms. You need to know about displacement reactions, which are uh, reactions between halogens and halide ions. You need to know that chlorine displaces both bromides and iodides, and bromine displaces only the iodides, which means that chlorine is the most reactive and iodine the least reactive of the group 7 elements. And then construct word and symbol equations for these displacement reactions. Uh, you might also be expected to know the feasibility of displacement reactions for ones which you are not aware of, but you are aware of the position of the elements in the group 7. You need to know the rule, which is that a more reactive halogen will displace a less reactive halogen from its compound in solution. Displace means push out, so uh, one halogen pushes out another halogen from the compound that it used to be in. Um, so we use a mixture of different compounds like potassium chloride, potassium bromide, potassium iodide and uh, solutions in water of each of the halogens. But in order to see the changes we also use hexane or cyclohexane which is an organic chemical and we put a, a layer of this on the top and uh, we use this because each of the halogens has a characteristic colour in um, hexane in that when chlorine is made the hexane layer is colourless but when bromine is made it gives us a nice bright orange colour and iodine gives us a characteristic purple colour. So the first thing we do is check those colours and so that we'll recognise them later. So what we then do is we take a one centimetre depth of one of the halide solutions and we add a one centimetre depth of a different halogen uh, both dissolved in water, mix them together, shake them and also have a, a small layer of hexane on the surface so that it can detect any halogen which is in solution. We look at the colour of that hexane layer on the top and from that we work out whether a reaction has taken place. Let's look at some of these examples. First of all we've got chlorine with potassium bromide. Now if there were no reaction we'd still have chlorine at the end and it'd be colourless but no we've got an orange colour here so that suggests that bromine has been made because orange is characteristic colour of bromine. So the chlorine plus potassium bromide has given us uh, bromine plus potassium chloride, so that one has reacted and there has been displacement. The chlorine has pushed or displaced the bromine out of solution, so chlorine must be more reactive. The chlorine with potassium iodide gives us a purple colour, that's a characteristic colour for iodine. So it looks like that's a positive reaction as well. Chlorine has reacted with potassium iodide to make iodine and potassium chloride. No reaction between the uh, bromine and the potassium chloride though because the characteristic colour of bromine is present and there's no characteristic colour of uh, chlorine so no reaction there but when bromine is mixed with potassium uh, iodide we get the purple colour of iodine so bromine and potassium iodide has made iodine and potassium bromide so that one has reacted. Bromine has displaced uh, iodine from a solution of potassium iodide, so bromine is above iodine. Iodine gives us a purple colour both with potassium chloride and potassium bromide, suggesting that no reaction has happened and we still got iodine there, so there's no reactions there. So overall we see that chlorine is the most reactive because it can displace both bromine and iodine, and bromine is above iodine, so the order of reactivity is chlorine, then bromine, then iodine. Chlorine then plus potassium bromide will make bromine plus potassium chloride. Now chlorine is Cl2 and potassium bromide is KBr. That's going to make bromine which is Br2 and potassium chloride, so in order to balance that we need to put a couple of twos in front of there. Now the chlorine is more reactive than the bromine, so it displaces bromine from its solution of bromide ions. 
We can take this further. The chlorine is a molecule, but the potassium bromide is made out of ions. Two potassium ions and two bromide ions. The bromine is a molecule, but the potassium chloride is made out of two potassium ions and two chloride ions. We can see here that there's a spectator ion, that the potassium ions remain unchanged at the end of the reaction. And therefore, really, the reaction is between chlorine and bromide ions to make bromine and chloride ions. The chlorine has changed into chloride ions and it's done that by gaining electrons. It's been reduced. Whereas the bromide ions have changed into bromine and they've done that by losing electrons and therefore as uh, oxidation is lost we can say that the bromide ions have been oxidized. More on this later. From these displacement reactions we can see that the order of reactivity is that they get more reactive as you go up the group which is the opposite to group one. So the most reactive of the halogens is fluorine. Fluorine would therefore be able to displace chlorine or bromine or iodine or indeed acetine from solutions of their ions. So here's an exam question about displacement reactions. It says that chlorine is added to sodium iodide and also there are various other combinations of chlorine with sodium bromide and so on and so forth. Look at the table that shows the results from these and other experiments, but uh, you need to complete the table to show the missing result. Well, we've got bromine with sodium iodide. Would we expect bromine to displace uh, iodine from sodium iodide? Well, yes, we would, because bromine is more reactive than uh, than iodine and therefore bromine will displace iodine just like chlorine does next to it so we'd expect to get a brown solution just the same which must be the indication of uh, making uh, the iodine in the aqueous solution here they're not using hexane. Chlorine reacts with sodium iodide to make sodium chloride and iodine write a balanced symbol equation for this well, here we're told the formula for chlorine, but we're not told much else, so we're expected to know the rest. Sodium iodide is NaI. Sodium chloride and iodine are made, so sodium chloride is NaCl, and iodine is I2. And then we need to balance it because we've got two iodines on the right-hand side, uh, so we need two on the left. Now we've got two sodiums. We need two sodiums and two chlorines there. And there's our answer. We've got a brown solution of iodine and the correct balanced equation gets us two marks. Chlorine will be out with a solution of potassium iodide to make potassium chloride and presumably iodine. So we need to complete the word equation. So we're going to get potassium chloride and iodine. So that's a displacement reaction. Astatine is another halogen, highly radioactive, difficult to investigate. Uh, scientists predict it will react with sodium. We've got to write a balanced symbol equation here. So we've got sodium, which is Na, and astatine, which is At. But remember, because it's a halogen, it's going to be At2, giving sodium astatide, which will have the same sort of formula as sodium chloride. So it's going to be NaAT. So in order to balance this, we've got two astatines on the, the left. So we need to have two acetines on the right, so we also need to have two sodiums on the left to balance up the two sodiums on the right. And there's our answer, again, as we'd expect uh, for that second part, one for the correct formulas and one for the balancing. Now we've seen in group seven, as we go down the group, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, they get more reactive. But why is that and why do they have similar reactions? Well, they all have seven outer electrons. We need to explain why the group 7 elements have got similar properties uh, in terms of them forming negative ions uh, with a full outer shell and then also explain the trend in the reactivity of these group 7 elements. So as we've seen before, here's our group 7. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine. They get more reactive as you go up the group. But they've all got similar reactions because they're all in group 7. So they've got 7 outer electrons. In order to become stable, these elements need to gain an electron. So they're all going to do this in similar ways. So they're all going to have similar reactions, for example, with sodium. 
And by reacting with something like sodium, they gain an electron and become more stable. Uh, now, although the atoms are very similar, as you go down the group, they have more shells of electrons, and this outer shell of electrons becomes further and further away from the nucleus, which is positive, which is what attracts electrons in. Now, what we're trying to do with these uh, atoms in group 7 is we're trying to attract an additional electron into the atom. Now, as we go further and further down the group, uh, and that outer electron is going into a shell which is further and further away from the positive pull of the nucleus, it's more and more weakly attracted. And so, when we get down to astatine, the attraction for this incoming electron is very, very weak, and therefore astatine is very, very unreactive compared with fluorine. Now, fluorine, which has got a very small atom, uh, the position that the electron is coming into is only on the second shell. Uh, it's very close to the attraction of the positive nucleus. So for fluorine, that uh, additional electron it's trying to gain is very strongly pulled in, and therefore fluorine is very reactive. So halogens become more reactive as you go up the group because they gain electrons much more easily. The reactivity of the halogens changes as the atomic number increases. Describe how. Well, as the atomic number increases, that's when you're going down the group, the reactivity will decrease. Fluorine is bubbled through a solution of potassium iodide. Predict the names of the two products. Well, here we've got a displacement reaction. Fluorine plus potassium iodide should give us uh, iodine plus potassium fluoride, and it does this because Fluorine is more reactive than iodine, and so will displace iodine from a solution of potassium iodide. So reactivity decreases, and we get potassium fluoride and iodine in either order. In all of these reactions of group 7, then, we've got an element with seven outer electrons, which wants to become more stable by gaining an electron. So in all of the reactions of group 7, we've got the atoms gaining electron. Now, reduction is gain of electron, so in each of these cases, the element, the halogen element, is being reduced. Group 7 elements have got 7 electrons in their outer shell. Chlorine is more reactive than bromine. Explain why. Well, this is because chlorine gains an electron more easily than does bromine as its atom is smaller. Bromine reacts to make bromide ions. This is called reduction. Explain why. This is because the bromine atom gains an electron. Here we're showing a bromine molecule, which is two bromine atoms, so each of them gains an electron, so it gains two here. And so chlorine gains electrons more easily than bromine. You don't have to particularly give a reason, but it says to allow because the chlorine has got a smaller radius, and reduction is all about electrons being gained. This question is about oxidation and reduction. Look at these equations. Which equation is an example of oxidation only? Well, oxidation is loss of electrons, so we need to find out which one is losing electrons. That one looks like equation D. As we can see here, the aluminium is losing electrons, so the answer is D. And which equation is not an example of oxidation or reduction? So one where electrons are not being lost or gained. The only one here is equation C. Uh, this is just a precipitation reaction. Uh, there's no oxidation or reduction happening. And finally, there are our answers D and C.